the Churches of Christ present Speaking the Truth in Love, a program bringing you life's answers from the Word of God. Kenny Townsley. I'm the preacher for the Cave City Church of Christ. I want to personally thank all the congregations that support this work and make it possible for us to be together in this program. At the end of this program there will be a list of those congregations that will scroll across the screen. We would ask you that if you ever need somewhere to visit, want to go see any of those, they would love to have you and welcome you with open arms. If you ever have a question that comes up from any of our study or maybe your own Bible study, Reach out to those congregations and, and they will help and, and give you an answer from the Bible. Reach out to the congregation at Nettleton or myself personally. We would love to be able to study the Bible further, giving you the Bible answer, truly fulfilling the title of this program, Speaking the Truth in Love. As I was doing some study back in Genesis chapter 2, around the garden this series of lessons came from this, and, and truly this would be in that series, it would be a lesson from the garden. And I want us to go back there and, and see this passage that, that starts us on this journey. Genesis chapter 2, you see in verse 15, it says, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now if you'll notice there at the start of verse 17 is that word that is so difficult. Everything's going along well. And then you see that little word, but. There's that exception, as it were. And you see 
one tree singled out, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and thou shalt not eat of it. And I have personally had people ask me before, we know that the creation that, that God has given was good. As a matter of fact, in verse 31 of, of Genesis 1, it says, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So here in a very good creation, all of the things that had been put there in the garden, and there was one tree. I've had people ask me, why did God put that one tree there? We're not going to save that answer till the end. We're going to give that answer now. And then go through and look at verses that lead us not only into the instruction that the Bible gives, but hopefully encourage us to do the things that are set before us. The reason God placed that tree there. If you look at the entirety of the Bible and go through and we'll select some, some, some scripture today and see some of the things that he has put there for us, you'll understand that God showed us how much he loved us several different times in several different ways throughout history. If you're talking about the, here in Genesis chapter 2, he showed mankind that he loved them by providing that garden. I don't know all the details. I don't know all the, the little small uh, intricate things about that garden. But I do know he created something that was very good and he placed man there. He showed them that he loved them. That tree of knowledge of good and evil that he said thou shalt not eat of was placed there that, so that we could show that we love him in return. And that's what any time that you see those things throughout the Bible that say, don't do those things, thou shalt not, is so we can return the love that he has so willingly shown for us. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20, that passage that is so familiar to, to most, the, the, the Ten Commandments, as you'll hear them called. Now we know if you continue to read, there are many more than ten. But those are the ones that you may see placed in a public building or, or maybe even have in your home. And as you go down through these, I want us to look at a few of them. As a matter of fact, we're going to look at seven of them. Verse 4 of chapter 20. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Verse 7, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Verse 13, Thou shalt not kill. Verse 14, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. In verse 15, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And then, verse 17, Thou shalt not cover, covet thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor anything that is the neighbor's. Now think about that. Ten commandments that we are so familiar with. Out of those seven things, we're sold. Do not do. Thou shalt not. Think about that. Because we as people don't like to be told no or don't. We like to uh, maybe have it suggested to us or or put very politely, but even in the world we live today, we don't like to hear, thou shalt not. And yet, God so specifically gave his chosen people, out of these ten commandments, seven of which were thou shalt nots. I want us to look at one in particular. And I want us to see the love that is shown in thou shalt not. Now remember, we said those things are there so that we can return a love that he has so graciously given us. Notice with me verse 4, and actually we'll read verse 5 again of Exodus chapter 20. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. 
Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Now notice here, it's a little more difficult. It's a little harder saying. It's, we see the thou shalt nots a couple different times in that passage, but notice he says if we do these things that we're to not, that we're told to not, we hate him. So naturally, if we follow the things, it would show that we love him. And we'll look at those things in a moment. But I want us to notice the specific. Matter of fact, out of all the commandments, this one and four and five is the most specific. Why is that? Why is it that when you see this command given in such specific nature, don't have a graven image, no likeness of anything in heaven or anything in the earth, let's go one chapter, just one. And you'll see the idea of judgments being talked about in verse 1. And, and more instructions and about buying a Hebrew servant and some things like that. And, and I said there are many, many commands. The Bible bears that out. But the reason he's so specific in that one of chapter 4 and 5, go with me to Exodus chapter 32. And let's see why he was so specific about not making the graven image, having no likeness of anything in heaven or on earth. And if you do... He's a vengeful God. He's a jealous God. And he brings that on those that hate him that do not follow after. Exodus chapter 32. Read with me starting in verse 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, notice, and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. I don't know if you've ever caught that before. That the most specific, thou shalt not, that God gave his chosen people in those ten commandments that so many people hold dear, they went against to the letter. They didn't just get close to breaking that command. They fulfilled it to the letter. Notice, it was a graven image of something on earth that took the place of God, showing that at that point, they hated him. I know that's a harsh word, but it's the word that the Bible uses. And in that, we see as it goes on, it, it says in verse 5, And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And the Lord God said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, notice, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf, and have worshipped it, and have sacrificed thereunto, and said, These be the gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. You know, this passage is one that is sobering. It's one that is a little bit scary because these people of Israel, these people who had literally been led out of Egyptian captivity, saw the miracles there at the sea and all of the different things that went on. Look what they did. They violated the specific 
Not only did they violate, but to the letter, the command that was given of no graven image, nothing on the image of anything on the earth, nothing taking the place of God. And in that, I don't necessarily find it as something that is a sad thing because we live in a better covenant with better promises. And if you think about it, whenever I see in Exodus chapter 20 verses 4 and 5, God saying, Thou shalt not do these things. And then, just 12 chapters over, mankind fulfilling it, the reason God put it there is, is because He knows us well enough to understand us and know what our desires and tendencies are. That should encourage us just like prophecy that is fulfilled. Matter of fact, if you think about it, it is a prophecy. He put that command there. He knew what they were going to do. And just like any other prophecy, it helps us to build our faith. It should encourage us to not make those same mistakes. If you look at it, if you go all the way back into the garden where we started this lesson, we know that what he put before us, the original creation was very good. And yes, because of sin, some things have changed. But I can tell you this, there's been a lot of things that haven't changed. We still have the responsibility to show him to return that love that was shown to us by keeping his commandments. The commandments that have been given give us the opportunity to return and show our love to him. Let's go into the New Testament. Let's read some passages that, that show that this is not just an opinion that I hold or, or any other one who, who might say these types of things. John chapter 14. I want us to read a, a passage there that is, uh, well, it's one of those if your Bible is so laid out, it is written in red meaning Jesus Christ spoke these things. And, and during this section of the book of John, Jesus Christ spoke quite often. But I want us to start just by a simple verse that, that is the example not only that we've looked at, but it's the specific instruction of what we've been looking at. I made mention that these commands, these thou shalt nots and the thou shalts as well, are there so that we can show that we love him. Verse 15 of John 14 simply says, If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, when the world, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Now we have the opportunity throughout this to see that we've been given commands just like they were in the garden, don't eat of that tree. Just like they were in God's chosen people, don't make a graven image. Don't make it of anything on the earth. Don't put another God before me. And in that we know that we are similar to those people of old, whether it be Adam and Eve in the garden, whether it be God's chosen people, we're similar. Now that should be a warning to us because we know what they did. Don't eat of the tree, and they partook. Don't make a graven image, and they made the graven image. So we have to be at least aware. We have to be extra diligent to make sure that we don't follow in the footsteps of those things, that we use those examples, learning from those things, understanding that we have commandments to follow that are ours, specific to us in the world that we live, in the commands, in the covenant, but most of all, in the love that we have for Jesus the Christ and the one that sent him. As you go through and you, you continue reading there in the book of John, if you see there in verse 23, it says, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. 
Notice it says, and it goes on there in verse 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Notice with this bringing of the instruction, verse 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. This is not something that should scare us. We have within us the ability to obey the commands of God, returning that show of love. Now, what we do with that responsibility is on us. What we do with that responsibility is to us as individuals, us as congregations, those uh, as families that, that encourage, not only encourage, but to bring together spiritually, to guide spiritually, to lead spiritually. And in that, we can return the love that God has shown for us. What's one of the most popular passages found in the book of John? John 3 and 16, For God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son. Notice here that Son says, If you love me, keep my commandments. In John 14 and 15. Same Son, the Son that was sent because we were loved, said, If you love me, keep my commandments. You go on and, and you can think about uh, even in, in chapter 15. It says there in verse 10, If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. Down to verse 14, Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. These are not my teachings. As a matter of fact, these are from the Master Teacher. And it's very specific of why we have commands. And if it's why we have commands today, guess what? Whenever you look back at that tree, whenever you see him say and talk about all of the great creation of the garden, but in the middle of it, there's that tree of knowledge of good and evil. Why did he put it there? Because he wanted man to return the love. Why did he give them the thou shalt nots? so that man could return the love. Why did he send Jesus Christ showing that he loved us and then give us instructions of how to lead this life so that we could return that love, so that we could be his friends, so that we could love one another as I have loved you, John 15 and 12. So in these things, we need to be aware that all of this is for us. Jesus Christ was the greatest that has ever walked in knowing and understanding what it meant to love. He literally laid down his life for us and in 1 Peter you get there to chapter 2 it says in verse 21 for even hereunto were ye called because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judge righteously, who his own self bare our sins and his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed." There are a lot of people in this life that we choose to love. There's no doubt you think about families, you think about congregations, people that you know, fellow Christians and those types of things. We choose to love a large group of people. We need to make sure that we're extra diligent in choosing to love Jesus the Christ and the Father that sent him. Now we know it also mentioned the Comforter, that Holy Spirit, and we have that as well, and we must love that as well because we can't guide our lives without this Holy Spirit, without the words that have been given for us, that Comforter that was promised. All of these things show that God loves us. We've been given commands so that we can return that love, showing Him that we love Him in return. I want us to... Think about all of the things and, and, you know, what are we told today? Well, the knots are phrased a little different in the New Testament. You'll see in like James chapter 1 and verse 21, it'll say, lay apart. You get down to Hebrews chapter 12 and it'll say, lay aside. 
In Colossians chapter 3, you'll see words like put off, and it gives a long list. As a matter of fact, uh, if you turn there, the, the idea is putting off a lot of things. You, you see a great amount of instruction. And, and I would recommend, just this, that's something that we don't need to hurry through. We need to be able to understand. So on your own time, read Colossians 3, 8 and 9. If you don't take anything away from this lesson, take that away. Read that short passage as your devotional reading. But I want us to, as we think about this final summation of all of these things, in the book of Ecclesiastes, there was a passage that is um, familiar to us. It's something that is uh, all the way back in, in the old law, but we need to understand when you get to the very end of Ecclesiastes, there in 1213, it talks about what our whole duty is. We know that the whole duty of man by the writer of Ecclesiastes is to fear God and keep his commandments. Now think about that. In context of what we've looked at, if we go through this life, no matter what covenant we may have lived under, if we go through this life fearing God and keeping his commandments, we fulfilled our whole duty because what have we done? We have returned the love that he gave to us. I do thank you for your attention this day. If you have a Bible question, would like to receive a free Bible correspondence course, would like a copy of two free books, Why I'm a Member of the Church of Christ, and Basic Bible Lessons, please contact the Nettleton Church of Christ. Speaking the Truth in Love can be viewed online. Speaking the Truth in Love is brought to you by these area churches of Christ.